Amen, amen, amen. I'm just so thankful for today, thankful for how God has been in my life lately. And I mean, I know he's been great in y'all lives as well. Amen. I'm going to start this by saying, you know, the Bible says that faith coming by hearing, hearing the word of God. Yes, now with that, you must know it, you must apply it, and you must live it. You must know it, you must apply it, and you must live it. Because once you hear it, you will be compelled to know it, apply it, and live it. Now, since we're talking about passion, God had really shown me about when you have that passion, it starts with a vision. That's why my vision board is up here. I'm like, what is this? Visual effects. Now, with vision, when God has shown me this vision, this was actually this is two years in the making. And just to let y'all know that nearly everything on there has come to pass Amen. within yeah. two years. Now, just to give a little background about my vision board, when God showed me, because I've been I've been to church where they said do a vision board before, but I didn't know the right way to do it. When God had shown me the vision, he said, line it up with scripture. Because think about it, his word is alive, sharp, sharper than any double-edged sword, piercing and dividing the soul and the spirit and the bone and the marrow. So if his word is that powerful, when we put his words to the vision that he showed, that he gives us, we'll be passionate enough, we'll be driven enough to go forward. Because that's the, that's the series it is, is, what is your driving force? Amen. This is part one about vision. Now, I'm looking at, you know, you have marriage. Yes. <laughs> That's already coming to pass. Being financially stable. Once he gave me the vision, he was like, you got to put in some kind of work. It's not just going to go and just jump off the paper and all of a sudden you're just going to wake up one day, you're just going to be financially stable. You got to be able to put in some work. So when he started adding all these things to my life as far as like the ministry being physically fit and traveling, a lot of that stuff I've done just this year, just this year, two years in the making. And God gave me this vision a long time ago. But with that, I didn't, I didn't, you know, let me see, what's the word? Lack on it. I didn't just, I just went straight in and I let it God, uh, he pushed me the whole way. Even when it seemed like he was going wrong. Amen. Now, with scripture, this right here means, like to me, this was my favorite scripture. You know, Joshua 1.9. Okay. So I, I affiliated that with being a man of God. And it's this thing about the lion. He is the king of the jungle. And the thing about a lion is when he hunts, he knows he's the leader. He knows that he got to provide for his family. He got to be able to rule the kingdom. So I affiliated them just like what the Bible talks about. Jesus is the conquering line of the, the line out of the conquering tribe of Judah. So I affiliated, okay, you know, God wants me to be a lion. Yes. He wants me to be a lion. And he also wants me to have a family. He also wants me to have marriage. And even with marriage, Proverbs 18, 22, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Right. So when he gave me that, I said, okay. And then next thing you know, all the other stuff started coming about. But you see, it had boom, boom, and boom. Now see, with this, I'm going to go ahead and give you five steps going towards your vision. But it's also going towards passion. Yes. Here's the definition of passion. Strong and barely controllable emotion. Amen. Think about when you're passionate. See, when you're when you just know something, you're like, hey, but when you're passionate, it's barely controllable. You have to get it out. You have to let that run free. Like if you're passionate about playing basketball, guess what? You're gonna practice every day. You're going you're gonna to go up in the court, even, even if it's not even with somebody else or running with a team, it's just going to be you, you're going to be practicing, you're going to be practicing, you're going to be shooting. If you're a football player, you're going to be doing the same thing, you're going to go out and you're going to work. Right. You're going to work out, if you're trying to get physically fit, you're going to be passionate about that because it's barely controllable emotion. That's good. Now with vision, That's good. the definition of vision is... An experience in which a person, thing, or event appears vividly or credibly to the mind. 
to be mine. God gives you that vision. You can be, you know how vision can come. It's been proven a lot of times in the Old Testament. You can be asleep, you have a vision. All of a sudden, you can just be just chilling next to you know, God just flashes something right in front of your face. And it just happens just like that. Because it's something that deals with the mind. That's how God gives you that vision. Amen. Now I'm going to go ahead and start it. Number one, know the vision. Amen. You have to know the vision. Because if you don't, you're just going to be going around blind. you just be going around trying to live out somebody else's vision. Like, there's nothing wrong with being a part of somebody else's vision, but God gives you your own provision in the process. Right. I, can, I can be helping someone else out, and all of a sudden, God would be like, okay, I need you to do this. Yes. Because I wanted you to learn this certain stuff. I wanted you to learn this certain craft. So you've got to have your own vision. First, you also got to have God, and also you have to know who you are. There you go. Because if you don't know who you are, you will be following somebody else's vision and you'll be looking around trying to go down their path and their path is different from yours. That's right. Because it's been it's been plenty of times where like me, my, my testimony is I used to be that person that wanted to follow everybody. Yeah. I want I want to do what everybody else wanted to do. I was actually following their vision and was wondering why I was not being fulfilled. I'm not being fulfilled because I was following somebody else's vision. But when he gave me my own vision on what he wants me to be and who he wants me to be and what he wants me to do, that's when I'll be able to know myself and I'll be able to push forward. So, number one, you must know the vision. Number two, write it down. Write it down. Because sometimes we can, you know, say the vision in our head and we just think it in our head. Sometimes we forget. We forget about it. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know I forget sometimes. Yeah. If I don't write it down or record it or anything like that, I will forget it. So when God instructed me to write the vision down, to uh, do the vision, he said, write it down. Come on. And guess what? When he told me to write it down, I wrote it on a piece of paper first, and I'm thinking, oh, that's it. But he's like, no, put pictures. See the vision. You know the vision, you write it down, and now you see it. You know, a lot of people, they're probably like, okay, that's, that's too extreme. But if you just write it down, you see the words, you see the pictures, and guess what? You will be able to move. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and read Habakkuk 2 and 2. <clears throat> Habakkuk 2 and 2. The word of God says, Then the Lord replied, Write the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that her may run with it. For the rep I'm not, I'm not going to go into three real quick. Just that part. May run with it. Write the revelation down. And they will run with it. That's how it is. Come on. That's good. When you have when you have a vision, just like you have a apostle, you have the vision for the church. Right, you, you wrote it down. God showed you the vision. He showed you different people coming to Christ. You ministering to the to the masses. You're ministering to you starting to try. You traveling and everything. He showed you that vision a long time ago. Exactly. And you written it down and you ran with it, been running with it ever since. And even as a young child. He showed you the vision. Amen. That's how it is. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what age you are. God will show you the vision. Yes, and it's up to you to write it down. Well, read it, write it down, and run with it. All right. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's good. He didn't say walk with it. He said run with it. Run with it. Because that's, that's where that passion yeah. comes in. Because if you're walking with it, you're going to be half doing it. Man, you're, preaching, man. you're just going to be like, Come man. I get to it. Yeah. I get to it. Go ahead, man. I get to it. Come on. It's over here. Yeah. But when he say run, you run. Yeah, that's good. You that's sprint, good. you go. Yes. And even in that times when you're running, he shows you those obstacles that's gonna come forth. Yes, sir. Come on. Because you gotta run with the vision. See, that's good. I look at it as being two years in the making, and that means I ran with it. Sometimes people can have a vision board and a lot of things won't come to pass for maybe five to ten years. You're like, Lord, what's going on? 
because he gave it to me and he said, these are the instructions that I need you to do right now. See, this was two years ago. I've actually had two more things added to that as far as getting a degree and also my uh, ministry loss and transition ministries. But see, I ran with it and all of a sudden he's like, okay, you asking all this stuff off, now I'll give you some more. Amen. Because visions and Bro. dreams is going to keep Bro. coming. Don't, don't, think, don't think just because you made it, you finished one thing, that he's not going to give you another. It's going to keep on going because it's going to be for his glory and also for your benefit as well. Because when you're in that vision and your moving status, you're going to be able to learn it. You're going to be able to soak in and you're going to be able to apply it to help someone else out. Amen. Come on. Now, number three, let God direct you. Amen. Amen. Let God direct you. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and go into Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. And the word of God says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. The first part of that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now, with trust, you have to trust God with the vision that he's giving you. Amen. Because there's going to be obstacles. Mm -hmm. There's going to be time. There's going to be times where you're tired. Mm -hmm. There's going to be times where you be like, I don't feel like waking up in the morning and going to the gym. I don't feel like reading my Bible today. I don't feel like saving my money. I just want to go ahead and spend it because I just want to, you know, ball out. I just want these new J's, so I don't feel like saving that. Maybe I'll do it next time. The thing is, and then with that, when you trust him, he will be able to direct you and say, hey, well, I know that you don't feel like reading the Bible, but I've given you a word that's going to pop up out that Bible, and you'll be able to share it to someone that's going through stress, right. that's being depressed, yep. that's going through suicidal thoughts. Yep. I would give you a word just like that. So that moment that you don't feel like reading the Bible, you'll be able to help someone Lord out. God, come on. Hallelujah. Now, I think about you know being physically fit. If the one time you say, I don't want to go to the gym, next thing you know, it starts with one time I'm going to the gym, Another time I go into the gym and next thing you know, you done flip all over. Like me personally, I really just been working out, working out like I need to be. But it's like I got I'm getting that mindset, that passion back, say, hey, I have a I have a dad that has diabetes. I have a lot of people in my mom's side of the family that has diabetes. I don't want to go down that road. So I need to at least eat a little bit more healthy. I need to at least do some jumping jacks or push-ups or something. So that's the passion that God has for me when it comes to being physically fit because he showed me the vision. He said, I don't want you to go back to being 250 pounds no more. You need to do something about it. When you get the vision and he shows you, you run it, will you do something about it? Now let's break this down again. And lean not onto your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, leaning onto your own understanding, you think it's your way, no one else's way. You try to make your own Bible of stuff that's going to happen. God might be like, okay, I need you to, I need you to get married. Well, most of them, nah, I don't think I need to do that. You know, I need to get myself together before I can do all that. But you know, but God told you, He said, Hey, I'm gonna bring someone to you. You leaning on your own understanding, say, Oh, I don't think I have it all together. I'm just a mess. I'm just a mess and all this other stuff. He said, No, don't lean on the understanding. Just be prepared when she comes. That's what it is. Just be prepared when she comes. And also, when you're leaning on to your own understanding, you're pretty much trumping what God has already told you. Because he speaks in his word. This is, this is the mouth of God. Amen. We're also the mouthpiece of God as well. Right. What he says and here goes. And all of his principles is in this book that we have. Yeah. So, you know, we can access it through phones and books and all that stuff. So there's no reason we shouldn't read the Bible. Amen. Now, here's another one. 
In all of your ways, acknowledge him. On, that's, that's a big one. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. Wake up in the morning. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Amen. When you're at work, co-workers getting on your nerves. <laughs> it happens to me all the time. I say, thank you, Lord, <laughs> for this day. For this day, for this job. <laughs> that's how it is. When you go home, thank you, Lord, for this day. You have to hit, acknowledge him in all of your ways. And, and with that, he will make your path straight. The King James Version say, direct your path. Now, when he says make your path straight, in that time where you're trusting in him, you're leaning not onto your own understanding and you're acknowledging him, the moment you start going like this, He'd be able to turn you straight. You could just be going. Amen. He'd be like, you know what? I don't feel like doing this today. He's like, nope. You're going right back straight again. You know, on a straight and narrow path. Now, there's another one. Don't be wise in thy own eyes. That goes right back to what it was talking about. Leaning onto your own understanding. Don't be wise in your own eyes eyes because sometimes we can't see things that's happening right off. That's why it's called a vision. He gives you a vision. It's been times like I look back at uh, Daniel at the at the end of Daniel I mean throughout the book of Daniel he God gave him the, re the revelation of revelation. Right. The things to come with the day of the Lord he gave him that revelation and he told him right at the end of it do not share this with anybody else. Now you look, the rest of the prophets throughout the Old Testament, they started revealing this stuff, but it was directly from God. And now the book of Revelation started, I mean, it was pretty much revealed to Daniel, and he was able to do it because he said, you know what, I want to I wanna go ahead and tell everybody else, but, the, but in his own eyes, in his own eyes, he wanted to tell everybody, but in God's eyes, he's like, no, wait, wait. Now, he's, it also says, fear the Lord and shun evil. Now, a lot of times when we hear fear the Lord, you know, we're just scared. You know, sometimes we get scared of. Him. It's not in that sense. It's like, yeah, we should fear the Lord, but also out of respect. You know, we should respect the Lord how we should respect ourselves. That's exactly how I do it. That's exactly how it is. You fear the Lord and shun evil. So when you do all of that at the end, you will shun evil. So when those evil temptations try to come, when those things try to knock off your vision, the, the procrastination and everything, you'll be able to shun it because you've been trusting in him, leaning on, leaning not on your own understanding and knowledge of him. And also he's directing your path. Right now. with that, number four, be patient. That is the one, <laughs> that is actually a killer. That is the hardest thing to do when God gives you a vision. Because in our own eyes, we do not know what's the outcome of this. We don't know when is it going to happen, where, we don't know what time, we don't know nothing. See, that's the thing. We have to be patient. And with that, I'm going ahead and read Habakkuk 2 and 3. Habakkuk Two and three. Now it says, For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and it will not prov prove false. Though it linger, wait for it, wait for it, it will certainly come and will not delay. Amen. It will not delay. See, even when that false stuff comes, it will be proved, it will not be proved false. Though it linger, see, that's the thing. It might fall to the side, you might think it falls to the side, but there's sometimes God will throw you a curveball so you can learn. Instead of asking God, why, Lord, why this vision is not happening for me right now? He's like, no, wait. What are you learning in this season? What are you learning in in this season, because if you're not learning them, you you will not be able to grow from it. Right. Now, 
when it does not linger, but also it will not delay. That means it's going to come in God's time. Not your time, in God's time. Now, God was really dealing with me on this one. This is the last one. Don't compare your vision. Mm, come on. Do not compare your vision. It's been so many times when I was walking out this thing, when he gave me the vision, I tried to compare it to someone else. I look back at, wow, wow boy over there, he already married. Why I still ain't had nobody yet? I just can't seem to find nobody. I don't know why. I mean, he out there smoking and drinking and all that, and all of a sudden he found him a wife. So why is it not happening for me? I'm trying to compare myself to him. You know, why are these people that not, don't serve God, why they got all the money? Why I got to be living paycheck to paycheck? I, I got to keep doing a, a eight to five every single day. I can't really get weekends off. I can't do that. Why? And then you start compare. I started comparing myself to the people that I saw on TV and the people that was around me that was moving faster than what I was thinking, but they was not serving God. So I was comparing that. Okay, how come, you know, it's a dude that I know that he just started ministry and all of a sudden he boom, he just rise to the top just that fast. I like, I, I'm just, I'm doing the videos, I'm helping, I'm ministering. Where's my time, God? I was comparing those things with those, those people that I thought were moving faster than what I was, but he wanted me to be patient. He wanted me to stand still because it, it was a learning process. Because if I didn't do any of these things, this vision boy wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't even be here. I probably would just gave up a long time ago. That's the one thing that happens. We give up so easily when the vision does not come to pass. You can be trying, trying. It's just like a person that's exercising. The weight don't come off. The muscle builds don't, the muscle doesn't build up right away. You got to put some work in. That's just like a person that's playing football. You're not just gonna get fast as Michael Michael Vick real fast. You're not gonna do that overnight. You're not gonna be able to, to shoot like Steph Curry overnight. It's going to it's gonna have to take endurance, perseverance. It's gonna take a mindset to push you, and that's that passion. You see the goals. You see, this is what I did every day. When God gave me the vision, he said, pray over it every day. And this was my prayer. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping me release all control so that God's perfect will in my life today is done. In Jesus' name, amen. That's what I did every single day. Even when I was comparing, when I was... You know, trying to let God direct my path, even when I was falling, even when I realized, you know what? I don't think I'm qualified enough for this. Yeah. He told me to pray that prayer every single day. Right. And I will break it down like, thank you, Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is our God. Yeah. He leads us yeah. and he guides us. Yeah. He shows us, hey, go ahead and go this way. No, what is it? No, uh, no, go this way. He is your GPS. The Holy Spirit is your GPS, your God positioning system. All right. See, when when He told me, the Holy Spirit said, "Go this way." And it's thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping me release all control to you. Okay. Control. Yeah. When God gives us that vision, we want to take control of it. We don't want we don't want Him to lead and guide us because we think. That it's going to make us change real fast. Sometimes we don't want change. We want to be able to get the blessing. We want to be able to get the vision. We want it to come to pass tomorrow, but we don't want the process. We don't want the process because the process is hard. The process is not easy. It's not. Now, all control to you so that God's perfect will for my life, God's perfect will. Will. Not 
Derek's perfect will, mm-hmm. not Apostle Magic's perfect will, not Chelsea's perfect will, not Lady YT's perfect will, not Pastor Tim's perfect will, but God's perfect will on, for my life yes, today, yes, not tomorrow, yes. today yes. is done. Now think about that. When, I, when God has shown me that prayer, when I mean by today, that I'm going to read my Bible today. I'm going to ask God to help me with the finances, to, to give. He's going to help me to be a better man for marriage and also for my family. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to help me save up to where I can get the car. It's funny. It's a funny story about that car. <laughs> See, before, the car that I have now is a, is a silver Honda Accord. It's funny that it looks just like that one. <laughs> But this is a this is an Audi A8 because I, I love Audis. So I had a, a 2004 Chevy Impala, right? Uh-oh. <laughs> I mean, I was it was breaking down. Yes, I was I didn't know nothing about credit, so my interest rate was like 28. Ooh-hey. My credit, boy, that interest rate was 28. I think I was probably only putting pennies on that car, and I had it for like two years, and I still owe like well five thousand on it. I'm like, what? That's nothing I can do. My dad's a mechanic. We've been putting parts on parts and nothing was going right. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And see, Chelsea calls my car Isaac because it was a promise. (laughs) Because I think about the promise of God. (laughs) When uh, a friend of mine, he was like, hey, I'm gonna search for these different cars for you. And the car that's out there right now, he was like, that car just came out on the lot. So I'm thinking, you know, hey man, my credit is jacked up. I'm about to put like a lot of money down. I went in, we did the paperwork over the phone, and he was like, hey, you approved with zero down and 9.9% interest rate. I was like, wow. And I saw the car, and I looked on my phone at the vision board. I said, that car kind of looked that's that same color. I was like, woo. And I said, and as she started talking about Isaac, I was like, yep, that's my car name, Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's what it was, Isaac. So as I look at that every day, and even still declare it over, uh, declare over it all the time, I know where God started me from. You got to remember where God starts you from. Sometimes you so quick ahead, quick to go ahead, and they say, you know, you forget where you started from. What I started from was just a vision that God had gave me to now, soon I'm going to be etching stuff off the list because of the fact that I thank thank the Holy Spirit for helping me release off control so God perfect will in my life today is done. That's the thing about vision. Once you see that vision, you'll be passionate enough. Yeah. Now think about passion. When you're passionate enough, you're not going to let it tarry. You're not going to let it lag. You're not going to procrastinate on it. You're just going to go full fledged all the way 120. You ain't going to give it no 50%, no 70%. You're not going to give it no 30%. You're not going to do it half the day. You're not going to skip a couple of days. You're going to be all in. That's what it is when it comes to passion. But when God gives you the vision, then you'll be able to run with it. Now with that, I have this one quote. I love quotes. Vision without action is merely a dream. Action without vision just passes the time. And vision with action can change the world. Let me say that again. (laughs) Vision without action is merely a dream. You just dreamed about it. You just, oh, okay, I wish, I hope. Action without vision just passes by. You're just doing stuff and you have no vision. The Bible says without vision, my people perish. So they're perishing without vision. Now, and vision with action can change the world. 
Now think about this story. Jesus gave the, showed the vision to his disciples. They ran with it. <laughs> they ran with it. They were unashamed. No matter what turmoil that came at them, they still stand it firm. And guess what? They changed the world. Think about Apostle Paul. The one that used to be a murderer. That used to kill Christians for, you know, for fun. He was just doing it because he thought that he was doing it in the name of the Lord. Yeah. One of the most influential apostles in the New Testament. Because he saw the vision and he ran with it. And through the teachings that we see in the New Testament, it's a lot of things that Paul has done and a lot of sacrifice that he did. He was able to change the world. That's how it is in our own world. I don't know if you really have a vision or if you have something in store, but you have to know the vision. You have to write it down. You have to let God direct you. You have to be patient and don't compare it to anyone else. You can't do that. So once you exercise these steps, you will be able to pretty much have a vision of your own. And you'll be able to walk it out and you'll be able to look you know, one to two years back and say, you know what? God did that. Amen. Not I did that, but God did that. There you go. I think about it all the time. I think about Chelsea, my fiance. God did that. I look at my, my car now. I was like, man, I was just, what, last year I was riding around in that, in that Impala that I was embarrassed to go up to the church with. And I'm looking at what I have now. And I'm like, God did that. So I'm like, I look at about traveling. Just this year, I started traveling a little bit, and I'm like, you know what? God did that. So I get no glory, but he gets all of the glory. Amen. That will conclude the message as far as vision. God bless y'all. Thank you, Lord. What a great word. What a great word. Amen.